In the workshop today, I'm working on a project where I've got a Windsor chair with a broken spindle. I need to replace that spindle, and in order to do that, I need to remove the back of the chair. So I'm going to take this back off, make the spindle on my benchtop shave horse, and then put it back together and stain it to match. I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. The first thing I do is turn this upside down on some padding. And Windsor chairs typically don't like to sit well, so I just put some weight on the back of it to keep it in place. Now I need to take off these legs because they are loose. So we'll do that first and it'll just give me more elbow room to work on the back. Now you can see someone's done some repairs here. There's staples in the legs and this is a screw hole where that spindle was broken off. So I just need to take these out and the legs should pop off. So this is where the tenon comes through and it's wedged. And I'll just show you here. This is the back and it comes right through the seat into here. So the reason that this is wedged is it flares out the bottom of this joint and that way it won't get pulled through this way. So in order to fix this, what I need to do is take out that wedge so that that joint can compress more and then it will go through. So the first step in doing that is drilling out the wedge very carefully. So there's the first piece and I'll just keep working away at it until I get all the pieces out. So the back separated well here that's exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, this spindle here broke right at the bottom. I can tell by the glue here this was a previous repair, so I think both of these were broken before. So I've now got two of these spindles I need to replace to get this chair back together. Here there's a finishing nail someone drove in from the top when they repaired this. This was the broken spindle. So that went on up in there. So this one I'm going to try and coax out. Now they seem to be fairly fragile so I don't want to break this one off because I want it ideally to tell me what the length of the spindle is. Wow, it's just barely moving. There. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a fair bit I need to get out there. Uh, to clear that hole, but we'll get that pulled out now. So I'm going to drill out this piece of the spindle now. This is similar to drilling out dowels. I've got a detailed video on that. I'll leave a link in the video description so you can check out how to do that. I'm now drilling out the spindles in the seat, and this is the one that had previously broken and had a screw right through the bottom. Uh, this is the one that came apart when the chair back came off and there's a crusty dark residue on it so this one was previously glued and obviously that wouldn't hold it all so two spindles we'll get them fixed i've got the mortises all cleaned out here and up here so i can now measure the length that i need for the spindle now to reproduce a spindle like this you might think you could do it on a lathe but that's a very dangerous proposition this piece of wood is so thin that it would easily snap and there have been cases where people have been working on a lathe and they've been impaled by something that they're working on. So please don't try that on the lathe. What I'm going to do is use a draw knife and a spoke shave to get this shape. Now, the key thing that makes these so strong because they're so thin is that the grain is perfectly straight on them. If the grain were running on an angle, these would easily snap.
So when you're selecting material, make sure you've got very straight grain. I'm using two different methods here. The first one is a dowel. So I've got a dowel with very straight grain. And I've also got a piece of wood here that I'm gonna split. Now I picked out this piece of wood because it's got a couple of different variations in the grain. So let me show you on this side. You see how there are long, these are called cathedrals this way. This is the grain that's running out. So on the edge here, the grain is almost perfectly straight. But over here, you see how it changes from a cathedral to then the grain's actually going a different direction. What's happening there is the grain that's at the surface here is actually traveling down across the board here. And this piece right here, for example, goes more than halfway into that board. So the grain is on such an angle here that if I were to make such a thin spindle with that grain running across the angle, it would snap. So you need to be very careful when you're selecting the grain in your piece of wood. So I'm gonna be using the section from about here to over about here and get rid of the section that has any grain running out on it. I've also got a video that I shot in the hardware store when I was picking out this spindle. It's got nice straight grain on it. But in the store, you can see here, I've also got an example of one where the grain is running across and is not ideal for this situation. You also want to avoid the defects. You're looking for the straightest grain possible. The other challenge of working down a small spindle like this is how to hold the piece reliably. I could use my vise here, but if I do that, I'm gonna be clamping and unclamping it a lot as I have to keep rotating this. So I've got a bench top shave horse I'm gonna use for that. I don't have room in my shop for a traditional shave horse that you sit on and work with, but this bench top version works just as well. Let me get it set up and I'll show you. This bench top shave horse has two pieces to it. The first one is the base. So I clamp it here and then clamp it over here. And then I've got a bolt that goes through the base and mounts the treadle. So this is the treadle. It's got a pedal on the bottom and a head on the top. It's got a couple different settings on it. I'm gonna set it up for the three quarter inch thickness. And then just put the nut on here. So how this works is I put my workpiece in under the head put my foot on the pedal and I've got really secure clamping here. So this allows me to take my foot off, turn it, take my foot off, turn it. Um, it's a really good setup. I've got plans for this in the video description and uh, it's time to get some tools out. I've cut the dowel down to length and I've cut this board down to length as well. Now what I need to do is split this board. Now if I run this through the table saw, I could end up going again a little bit of cross grain. So what I'm gonna do is split it and let that natural grain show me where the grain pattern is and that way I get the straightest grain possible on the piece I'm working through. So now I have a square piece of stock here. I'm gonna work it down, but what I wanna do first is mark out this section here to get a size on the width. So I'm just gonna line up the dowel with the spindle and the square piece and mark out roughly where this widens out. About here and about here. Given the choice between working with dowel and stray stock, I would recommend going with the dowel, but I'm gonna show you both. Uh, with a dowel, as long as you've got straight stock, it's gonna save you a little bit of work. So let me show you here what I have to do. First of all, get it square, and then what I'm gonna do is work it to an octagon to get it to the point where I can start shaping it. And to do this, I use a draw knife. Okay, 
So this split out a little bit more than I wanted here. So this is going to be the point at this end. So I just need to remark this. This is originally where I wanted to use this heavy part, but I'm gonna have to switch ends here. Okay, so I've got it into an octagon and this is the round, so they're relatively close. The next step is to start shaping it. So what I'm looking to do here is create it thinner down here and just thinner a little bit above this line here. So I'm gonna preserve this the way it is now um, and work this down. So a draw knife is really a roughing tool. Um, this gets rid of waste very quickly, as you can see by the large chunks that come off. And then we're gonna move, move down to a flat spoke shave. And then I've got a concave spoke shave as well, just to refine it. So this is where I need to dig in. I'm digging into the grain and then pulling it back. So again, digging in and then pull. So I'm happy with that end. I'm gonna flip it over and then work on the longer part. So this is the part I wanna preserve that width. So I'm gonna work from here down. Okay, so that's the rough shape. And what I'm gonna do is use the spoke shaves to refine it further. I don't wanna go too far with the draw knife because I could end up splitting out parts that I need. So it's just a roughing tool. Now compare that with this. I'll put the spindle in the uh, dowel in here. And this already gives you a head start. there it's round so this one's the dowel this one's the square piece and they're now both rounded at the end and this end and you can see how much larger they are than the original spindle so uh, if this was a chair maker doing this work, they'd probably get a lot closer here than what I'm doing, but I don't do this very frequently. So I'm just gonna take it easy and take my time getting close to that dimension that I need.
So with the flat spoke shave, I've now got the shape that I'm looking for, but it's still just slightly fatter than what I want. And with a flat spoke shave, you end up getting a whole bunch of flat spots around here. So the last thing I'm going to do is use the concave spoke shave. And that just helps round and smooth off all the edges. And that'll get me 95% there. And then the last part is just using some 120 sandpaper to smooth it all out and get it the same smoothness as this chair. There aren't any um, spoke shave marks in this. Some chairs, they just leave it at the spoke shave. Um, but this one's pretty smooth, so I'll have to sand it out. And uh, what I'm doing is fitting these as I go. So this is fitting just barely in here. And at the top, it's still too thick to fit in the back. So I'll finish those off as I'm refining it here and just work on those fine details. I've now got the two replacement spindles and I'll give you a close up once they're assembled in the chair and before I put the finish on. But I want to mention again, I've got plans for this benchtop shave horse if you'd like to make one for yourself. There are some things that you can't do with machines and this is a perfect example. This shave horse is an important tool when you're working with smoke shaves. Before I can put everything back together again, I need to make sure I clean off all the joinery. Clean off the mortises and the tenons to make sure there's no glue residue left on them and I've got bare wood. Then on the back, I need to clear out the slots here so I can put new wedges in. Here you can see I've got some wood still left in it, so I put that in the vise and clear it out with a saw. The last step is to make some wedges for the tenons, and I use this little jig I made. It's got a little pocket in here, you can see it's wedge shaped, and it's just two pieces of wood glued to two more blocks. You can see here the angles that I put on them. So what I do is I take a piece of birch and just mark it off here, cut it in the saw, split out some pieces, and then those little pieces I can put in here, run a plane over to give me the wedge. I'll show you how that's done. So now you can see how this wedge goes in here and stops about halfway down and that'll give me enough power to be able to expand the end of this tenon once it's in the mortise. The glue's all dried in this chair, and it's rock solid. Before I get to showing you a close-up of these spindles, I want to tell you about a new service that we're offering, and that is one-on-one -on -one advice. If you'd like to talk to me about a project that you're working on, your workshop setup, or a tool or process, I'm happy to do that. We can do it via WebEx, by Zoom, or even by the phone. I'll leave a link in the video description below with more details. Let's take a closer look at these spindles. Got a nice tight fit here at the top of the spindles. 
the dimensions here and the width are very similar. And then as we go down the chair, you can see the style here, this width and the profile is matched as well. And then down at the bottom here, again, we've got some nice tight fitting joints and these are looking a similar profile as what we've got here. So the next challenge is how to finish these to match. Now you've probably seen me use these before. These are some man wood stains. These are acrylic. This is the latest technology in wood finishing. And I really recommend these products. They offer you a lot of control. Here's the black stain applied. And on this spindle, I've sanded it. And that leaves the grooves here with the black stain in it. So what I'm gonna do is sand this one, get it ready, and then we'll put the antique walnut on this so it can match these. You see how well that's working? So this stain layers on top of that black and it ends up turning it a brown color. And the nice thing about this is if you put too much on, you can just rub it down and take some off. But I like the way this is going on. So I'll work this on both sides, all the way up the spindles, and get it ready for polyurethane. So you can see here close up how the darker green is matching the green here and the sheen is very similar to this. I put a semi-gloss polyurethane on. We'll take a look down here at the bottom and you can see how well these two new spindles fit in with the existing ones that are here. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you learned something by watching this video. It's our goal to build a supportive community around furniture repairs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others find our videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here, click on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. Mm -hmm.